Good evening, Sunshine Coast, and welcome to another episode of Local Focus. And tonight we're up to episode seven. So, uh, and I'm your host, Darren from Digital Brista, where I serve up freshly brewed content strategies, tips, and tricks to help small business owners and entrepreneurs get started with live streaming. And before we introduce tonight's guest, I just want to have a quick chat to you about the program. So, Local Focus, I've put that program together to uh, basically get small business some exposure to what it's like to be in a, in a studio environment and and give them an understanding of how live video can actually um, assist with growing your online audience so if you would like to have your business featured on local focus then all you need to do is head to the website digitalbrista.com.au forward slash local focus just pop your details in the form there and i'll be in touch to see if you're a good fit so uh, without any further ado, let's introduce our guest tonight, and it's Anthea from That Shot For Her. Welcome to the studio, Anthony. How are you? Good, thanks, Darren. That's Thank you for having me on. No problem. I, um, I, I've, been, I, I've been sort of seeing sort of things happening down there at, um, is what they call it, Marketplace? Mm, yeah. Right, River Markets. River Markets, mm. that's the one. I, I always get, I know there's a market in there somewhere. And uh, it was right around about COVID, I guess, when I started seeing your signs go up. And then- It sure was. We were due to open the week everything closed. Yeah. So we had three months of anticipation. That's right. Yeah, it's, it was, and I guess retail is one of those things that you had to make a decision. Uh, is it gonna be the right thing to do to open and then just sort of I mean, you, obviously there's going to be expenses and stuff like that associated with it, or you just say, okay, well, let's just hold off. So you decided to hold off and you think that was the right decision to make? Absolutely. Yeah. There'd be nothing worse than opening for a week and closing down. So as much as we were keen to open, it just didn't make sense. Yeah. We were just really glad it didn't last like the Victorian one and our stock was still appropriate for the season when we finally got to open our doors. Yeah. And uh, I must say, you know, I'm probably not what uh, most women would say an expert when it comes to women's fashion. And it's you, you're probably a little bit surprised when I popped in to have a chat to you and, and started talking about what we're talking about. But I just wanted to, um, I was actually a little bit surprised to see uh, a women's boutique or fashion boutique um, set up in the suburbs. Like it's something you don't really see very often these days. And if, and if you look at the main hub, I guess you've got the plaza and, and all that sort of retail precinct around there. Uh, I thought it was a pretty bold move. So can you sort of just share with us a little bit about your thinking of, of why you set up in Blah Blah and, and how do you think that move has gone? I think it's been really well received. Um, my first store where I cut my teeth was actually at a little place called Brigolo outside Chinchilla. And believe it or not, that has a population of 40 people. Um, at the time, my husband and I bought some land and there was a little shop on there and it was, what do we do with it? Pete had done up the shop and there weren't really any clothing stores suitable. And I thought, okay, farming ladies like fashion as much as town ladies. Absolutely. So that was how it started. And when we relocated to the coast in 2019, I was quite keen to see if I could cut it in town rather than just the country and looked I guess for a little while, but because we we're a, a Bly Bly family, we were quite keen to see if we could build a local business. And I'm not a plaza type of person. I feel, uh, and I'm not denigrating anybody who's part of the plaza. Um, it, it serves a really uh, important part of our retail community, but we are very much a service-based shop. We want to get to know our clients. We want them to come back time and time again. We take pride in, in I guess, letting somebody feel really good and have a new fashion experience. And I think most of the stores in the big shopping centres, you walk in, you're very lucky if you find somebody who greets you, let alone serves you. And myself and Fiona and Sue all have extensive experience and we can help you look at what design suits you, what colours suit you, how to put an outfit together right through from a dress, shoes, handbag, whether you're going to a funeral or the races. Yeah. So um, 
I guess the way we're driving our business is we want to personalise it and we want people to feel it's their little shop, it's their go-to. If they're going to a party, if they're going out to dinner or they're going to the beach. Yep. Yeah. So it's, it's more about, it's less about time and it's more about experience. Absolutely. Because I think that's what you find, uh, you know, the, and particularly because uh, for a couple of reasons, I would say, is that generally the staff are younger. Obviously, because it's cheaper. Mine are all over 40 and I'm <laughs> saying no more. <laughs> 40 and fabulous. Yeah. And uh, and I guess the other thing is is that there's probably more of a push for sales. And I guess, so from what I've sort of, you've talked about, it's about that experience and education process. Yeah. So, and I, and I guess that's what a lot of people perhaps you know in a in a more suburban or, or built up type of area uh, are probably not used to you know i grew up in a small country town as well and you know service was everything because everyone knew everyone so uh, i think that's important uh, you know for a small business is to offer that service and and that level of experience that you know you're talking about so uh, oh, that's, that's great and it's been well received it's been really well received and I think um, that's in a funny sort of a way COVID's done us a favour. People didn't want to go necessarily into the plaza where there were lots of people and there may have been a lot of people travelling that were visiting the plaza. Um, they felt safe coming down to their little local shopping centre and all of a sudden finding a new little gem that they could be proud of. Yeah. yeah. Mm. And so who would you define as your ideal customer? I guess we're really targeting women over 30 yep. um, and anybody over 30. It doesn't mean we don't have the occasional customer that's under 30, but probably our main demographic is the 40 to 60 year old. Yep. Uh, we have certainly have some senior ladies. We have one lady that comes in for a cuddle every Thursday morning <laughs> uh, when she comes and does her groceries. Um, I guess what we really are wanting to achieve is for women to feel they can come in and it doesn't matter what they're dressed in, what they look like, whether they're a bigger woman like me or whether they're a size eight, that they are welcome. Yep. And I think one of the things that has happened increasingly in retail trading is that if you walk into a shop that doesn't quite fit your style yep. or your age, yep. you're made feel really unwelcome. And I would be absolutely shattered if I thought somebody walked into our store and felt that they weren't equally welcome to anybody else. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's absolutely important, I think, uh, yeah, particularly with everything that's gone on. It can actually obviously be like a, uh, a comforting place to be, like your, mm. your lady that visits every week. Yep. You know, and, yeah. I, and I think that's testament to perhaps, you know, how you're running the business and, you know, the service that you are offering is that people do feel comfortable in doing that. So well done for that. Yeah, we, we're actually creating some really nice friendships between women that come into the store. Yeah. Um, a lady from New Zealand moved recently and she didn't know anyone. I've introduced her from another to another lady who's not long been here from New Zealand. Um, and we've had a couple of what we're calling soirees where we're introducing some of our labels on seasonal changes to um, some of our repeat customers. And the women are forming really nice friendships yeah. and meeting each other for coffee and not in a clicky sort of a way, just finding people that they share things in common with and enjoying that social outing. Yeah. yeah, that's that's good to see because obviously I don't think a lot of, you don't see a lot of socialising in the plaza. It's no, <laughs> no. And I, I think also the plaza, people know what the stores are. Yeah. And if you go into um, Kmart, you know what you get. If you go into Myers, you know what you get. One of the things that um, I delight in with our store is that we carry different labels that aren't necessarily available in town and we change our stock all the time mm. and that makes it interesting and it's really important for locals that they feel that each week or each second week they can call in and there will be something new in store for them. Yep. Mm. Yeah, no, that's great. So on that product, uh, can you talk a bit more about uh, the types of products that you do stock? Like yep. you're saying that there's some different names there as well, so some, something that 
might be a little bit different to what they're seeing elsewhere? Um, one of the things that is really important in a hot climate for women is to have clothing made of natural fibres. And I do not have synthetic clothing in my yep. store. So it's linens, it's cottons, it's things that are cool and comfortable for the summer, and then wool um, and thicker cottons for the winter. So um, people will always feel comfortable and the clothes are climate suitable, which is really important. Yep. Yeah. And so you go beyond just the, um, the the clothing side of things and you extend into accessories and other things yes, as well? we have shoes, we have handbags, we have hats. Uh, we can put whole outfits together. As I said, it doesn't matter whether you're off to the races or off to the beach, we can cater for all of those things. Oh, yeah. That's excellent. And uh, so I noticed, uh, you, you talked about it just before, that uh, before the Sunshine Coast you were out in the country, so you had that sort of sea change. Mm -hmm. uh, so how have you found that, you know, moving from the country to the coast? Has that been a, a, a positive thing for you? Um, it hasn't really changed significantly. Yep. I mean, out west on the coast, it's still warm. It's Queensland. So the sort of labels that we carry would be consistent across most areas yep. in Queensland. Um, the important thing is that we try really hard to source Australian either made or produced products. Yep. Certainly all designed by Australians. So we're supporting local industries as much as we can. And uh, I think COVID has brought to the fore that we need to look after our own producers and manufacturers. So although we have beautiful cottons from India and we have shoes made with the best quality leather out of Turkey, the designers of the products are all Australian. Right. So oh, we're su good. supporting Australian businesses. Yeah. yeah. And I was going to, I don't know the, you know, the retail side of things when it comes to fashion, but I would imagine, like, I can understand how, you know, the bigger outlets and things like that, they can have these massive buying power because they're a big sort of, um, you know, group of, of um, businesses. But how does that convert when you're a, a, a sole operator? Like, do you find that uh, suppliers are as receptive to you as some of the bigger labels or, or bigger outlets and things like that? How do you find that process? I guess um, boutiques like mine tend to focus on producers that aren't in the mass market either. Yep. Um, we're all trying to give people a look of feeling special. So the the idea of mass purchasing the same thing and the same colour and you know, all through the store mm. is not what we're about. So we're also not a Kmart, so I can't put things on the shelves for $10, yep. but we try very hard to make things competitive and fair. And we stock two price points of nearly every item. Mm -hmm. So although I will carry um, a really good quality leather shoes for $150, for example, I also have uh, a non-leather shoe that will be around about the $70 mark. Right. So everybody that can come in will feel there's a price point they feel comfortable with. Yeah. And I think that's really important. Uh, um, and, and I think it, it really comes down to value. I, I've talked about this in the past as well, but people have a perception of value anyway. So whether the price is more expensive or less expensive, it's, it's what goes with that product and I think the service that you're offering is probably something that a lot of your customers would look at as being where the real value is. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, we had a lady come into the store last week and she said, I've worn pants or shorts for 30 years. Everyone's telling me dresses are in, I don't know where to start. Yeah. And there's, there's a big range of dresses in styles and shapes and sizes and colours and prints and all those things play a part in making someone look the best possible that they can. Yeah. So our, our idea is to, I guess, help educate women about, you know, if you're a larger lady, what sort of pattern suits you? If you're very petite, what sort of cut suits you? Yeah. So that you enhance whatever it is that you have. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So you talk about educating women there. Now let's have a chat about maybe <laughs> educating the guys or the, the gents out there that yeah. might be watching. And, uh, I've, I've over the years probably steered fairly clear of uh, buying for my wife and it's probably because I don't know enough about it. So what would be two tips that you could give to me and a whole bunch of other guys out there going, well, 
yeah, it'd probably be nice if I could go out and buy something for my wife. Um, but I, I really wouldn't know where to start. So what's probably your two top tips to sort of for guys that want to grab something for their ladies? The first thing is we have the trusty gift voucher. It's always there, but we'll do it up. We'll paper wrap it. We'll put a ribbon on it so it looks special yep. when it's given. But if you would like to give your wife a gift, please don't feel intimidated and in coming into our store. We are now starting to slowly build a little repertoire of males that are coming back because one, we gift wrap. Yep. And we gift wrap everything that leaves the store so that gets rid of that problem for you. <laughs> um, we also say to people, look, if you know a size or you know a colour or there's a favourite piece of jewellery or a favourite handbag, if you can sneak that in, we'll build something around it for you. Okay. Mm. And so if, if that doesn't quite marry up to you know, the, the ladies' expectations, they can bring that back Absolutely. in and yes. exchange? Or Providing they've got their, their receipt of purchase yep. and, and, uh, and the tags are intact. Yeah. Well, like we can take off the price tag, yeah. it's a gift, so we can take the price tag off. But if everything else but the actual price is on it, yeah, we're happy to swap it over for something of similar value. Excellent. Mm. So there you go, gents. There's no excuses now. Head on down to uh, that shop for her. And uh, Anthea will and, and the girls will be able to help you out. Absolutely. And don't forget it's Valentine's Day next week, gents. It is. Mm. So it's probably good timing that we got it's you in right timing. now. It's great So uh, mm. definitely. So... I think we can wrap it up there, Anthea. Thank you. I, um, I do appreciate you coming into the studio and uh, hopefully we've educated the, uh, probably more so the guys, I reckon. I mean, the, the ladies just love <laughs> yeah, the The ladies anyway. don't need much excuse. And I guess we're very fortunate being beside the, the IGA that um, we're well positioned. Well, that's you, you do get good foot traffic there, I would imagine. Yeah, we do. It's yeah. great. It's one of the reasons I chose the store. Excellent. Mm. Mm. So thanks again, Anthea. Mm. Thank and, you. And uh, hopefully we'll, well, not hopefully, I will catch you around the shops, I'm sure. Mm. And uh, thanks for coming in. Thank you. And if any, oh, if anyone would like to call into the shop and say they saw the program tonight, we'll give them 20% on a purchase for the next seven days. Wow. Mm. That's that's good. So I've got the date in the, uh, in the description there. So there's no excuses and perfect time to jump on out and uh, grab something for the wardrobe. Mm. Excellent. Thanks, Darren. Thanks, Anthea. So thanks, guys. There's another episode of um, Local Focus. And we'll be back on Wednesday night to... Uh, and we've got Wendy's Soy Wax Candles. That's a bit of a mouthful. But uh, she's also a Bly Bly local, so she'll be in the studio and we'll be covering off some great gift ideas uh, for uh, Valentine's Day as well. So look forward to catching on Wednesday. And until then, have a great day. Mm.